Hi everyone, this is Matt, Senior Engineer from Soft Solutions here, and today I'd like to take a look at a blog post we actually published recently around how to set up uh, paging music on the grand stream range of paging speakers. So we all know how to do music on hold with phone systems. Um, it's generally grab a WAV file and plug it in, and then any time a caller comes in and is put on hold, that's basically it. But with paging speakers, no matter which brand, um, typically there are a couple of different ways to do this. So through the blog, and definitely subscribe and read our blog, we publish articles uh, fairly frequently, uh, a couple of techie articles for VoIP each month as well, so definitely worth uh, hopping on there and having a look. And also that's probably a suitable plug for our LinkedIn VoIP group as well, we also publish these articles there. So when I first got a Grandstream paging speaker unit in-house and started testing, there wasn't a lot of documentation I found around online around setting up hold music and that is a key feature especially if you do read our blog we've written some articles around some verticals where these uh, speakers fit in extremely well um, it could be within hospitality it could be a cafe with music that's playing uh, on these speakers it could be within a school it could be within a warehouse facility for that matter <clears throat> so the grand stream range support a couple of ways of playing music. So obviously it being a paging speaker, paging is one of the key functionalities of the device. But with the grand stream GSC range, we have a couple of ways of doing it. And this is really handy, especially since we have Bluetooth within the speakers uh, and we do have the ability to connect via Wi-Fi as well, which is excellent for deploying these speakers without having to run extra cabling. So for today's video, I'd actually like to look at the streaming media uh, aspect when it comes to these uh, paging speakers. <clears throat> as it is a little bit different. Um, Bluetooth setup with these speakers is basically the same as any other device. You go into the GSC's uh, web UI and you basically pair up your phone with it. And it's as simple as that. Um, once it's been paired, any device that has been paired with the speaker can play music to it. Really handy. A little bit different when it comes to sort of ambient music, because if someone walks out of Bluetooth range, then of course the music's going to stop playing. So within our blog post, and we're going to have a look at uh, the real life application of this, we looked at setting up a streaming media server. <coughs> and once that streaming media server had been set up, how to get it to play music either via rebroadcasting and it via an existing radio station that's already online on the internet or via local audio so there are a lot of um, especially kiwi companies we have a lot of fantastic local bands here um, so if we have that local music on the server that may be a little more localized then we have the ability to be able to play it on the speaker <coughs> excuse me So let's have a look. So the first step, as we mentioned in the article, is we want to make sure that when we are deploying these speakers, that they are absolutely on the latest version firmware. So by to do this, we first of all go to our speakers. Once you've accessed it via the MAC address uh, DNS name, we go in and we pop in our credentials to log in. <clears throat> Now, notably, I have been testing with the speaker already, so we will get to this bit about the blacklist, whitelist, greylist. But what you want to do is you want to come in, and when you first log into the speaker, it'll ask you to change your password to something more meaningful and more complex than the default um, password that's set against the system, so I strongly recommend doing this. Then you'll, by default, come to the account status page. Currently, I don't have the speaker registered with any SIP servers. But if we were using a SIP server, then we'd be able to see the details here. But for the purposes of this video, we want to set it up as a paging speaker. But regardless, you'd want to go in, come to status, system info, so we can actually see what the latest version firmware it is running. Then we can go to grandstream.com forward slash support forward slash firmware. 
we search for our speaker. So in the case here, we're actually using the GSE 3510. It has two-way audio with it, very, very cool speaker. And we can see we're on 1.0.1.6. And you can see I have already upgraded the firmware on the speaker. So it is on 1.0.1.6. So that's excellent. We know that we're on the very latest firmware edition. So we should be all set to get our streaming media server up and running. So our next step is we want to actually get the software that is going to stream our media for us. Now, interestingly enough, that are a lot of solutions online that allow for streaming audio via multicast. Most notable is a program called VLC. Currently at the time of the recording of this video, um, support for VLC doesn't appear to be present as whilst it broadcasts audio, it doesn't seem to play nicely with the speaker. For, today, uh, for today's uh, video and as per the blog, we're actually looking at a utility called uh, FFmpeg. Now, again, it's very handy. It is a complete cross-platform solution to record, convert, stream audio and video. In the case of our application for today, we want just the stream audio component. Um, so we go ahead and we go to download. So this again is ffmpeg.org. We want to get the, so this is for doing a streaming server on Windows, so we want to get the latest Windows binary. We want to get the latest build. And then you see here at the bottom, we've got a nice download button. You see that this current build is of August 28th, so three days ago. We want to click download build. <clears throat> so the application itself um, in its zipped format is only 81 megs, so it is pretty small stuff. So we want to go ahead and once that's downloaded, we want to get our uh, any zip utility that can open it. Currently I'm using WinRail with an eval version. So by And then we want to find somewhere on the local machine where we can actually put this. So the directory listing is pretty simple. We've got a bin which has got our application files, we've got some documentation, presets, our uh, open source license details and a readme file on how to use the utility. So basically we want to go and just extract this anywhere on a local drive where it can fit and it can be run from there. So after you've extracted to a suitable folder, you'll have a directory that looks a little bit like this. <clears throat> so we can see, I've just popped this onto my local disk on C, and I do have a couple of files here, um, which I kept handy for uh, running this from the command line. It's notably ffmpeg is a command line application. So looking in our bin folder, we can see we've got a few files. I've also been doing some testing with playlists as well, but for today's video, we'll be looking at just playing a single uh, file. So it would be recommendation, recommended if you were to have a playlist of files, get an application such as Audacity, which is free, and again, the links are in the blog post, and splice all your music together into a single file. Which brings us to actually running this. So... In the case here, and this is also the same from on the blog post, we've got our command that we will be running. So notably with this application, you'll want to have it set on a machine as a scheduled task. And again, we won't be covering off scheduled tasks because most sysadmins will already know how to do this. So we're just going to look at it and it's a uh, proof of concept in this case. So get it working on the speaker. So we can see here, so we're doing it via local music, and that is basically the bin file here that we're playing it from. So we can see our directory where the music is present. We say we've got a few switches here as well, which we go into more depth on the blog post about running, but basically it's just saying um, this is our sample size. This is the code that we're using, so we're using G722 because it's higher uh, bandwidth than, say, something like PCMU or PCMA. And a few more switches, and then finally the broadcast address that we'll be broadcasting to. So let's have an actual look at running this. So first of all, we are going to hop into our FFmpeg directory. Then we're going to go into our bin. 
And now that we're in the bin directory where the application lies, we can actually run this command. You see now that we have successfully run the command, we can see here that it is streaming at the bottom of the screen. And some of you may ask, well, when we do hold music normally with uh, PBX systems, we, ha we do it via a WAV file. And WAV files are great. They are uncompressed audio, and they have very little CPU overhead, which is great. But in the case here with our audio file, because we're streaming and looping, if we were to be going to multiple paging speakers on a site, that is additional network traffic that we're having to use because we're using a WAV file. You can see the song's just ticking over in the background here. And so it, by using MP3, it does add a little more system overhead. However, it reduces our network, uh, network bandwidth requirements. So with these switches running, this audio file is just going to run and run and run and run until we tell it to stop. So again, this is where the scheduled tasks become very important for making sure this is running at the correct times. But with that, we now have our streaming system set up. And the next step is to get this playing on the speaker. So we go back. Now, I, I have already been using... Um, the speaker already, so let's just turn this off for now. So I've already been using and testing on that RTP, RTP address. But to set our speaker to actually listen to that stream, so our broad RTP broadcast IP was to 239.1.1.1 on port 5004, and this is really important because the address that we actually utilize for this there's a specific set of addresses which you can find in our blog post uh, that the speaker will, will only listen to so it needs to be with an acceptable address this address however is an acceptable address so that's great so back to the gsc 3510 under multicast paging we would go to multicast listening and from there, we would set our address, which again is that 239 address that we are running for our stream. We would set that as a listening address. We would click Save. And then the device would say, hey, I need to restart to apply these settings. <clears throat> so we would go Save and Apply. So now if we go back to our device, so it's restarted. Let's start and stop our stream for the moment. Let's restart it again. And so in the case of the device, we'll restart and then this screen will be shown to show that the device is currently playing audio. And that's kind of it. Once it's been set, it'll sit there quite happily. One notable thing is that when you are running a streaming media server and playing audio via the device. This is being treated as a page and this is where this warning comes in at the top of the screen. Because an active page is playing, because we're listening to our multicast server, any incoming calls will be rejected. So what you need to do after this has been set is to go into your blacklist, graylist, whitelist, and then add in any extension numbers that you are dialing or that needs to access this paging speaker, or all paging speakers even, uh, and just go in and whitelist those numbers. So once that's been done, you'll have the ability to take over the page, announce your broadcast from a phone, say, you know, doctor to reception or something on those lines, and then once that's been hung up, the music will begin playing again. So that's it. We have download FFmpeg. We've run it. Ideally, we'll have a sysadmin that's gone ahead and set this up so it's running. We've logged into our device. We've made sure it's on the very latest firmware and that we've got our whitelist and graylist set up as well as having our multicast listening address. And that's it. So thank you very much for watching. We hope this has been educational for you. Any queries, please feel free to reach out to us on our voip at softsoul.co.in address and have a great day.